Whoa, whoa. When did the class of 2016 get this big? My name's Varun, and I moved to CMC a while ago. Truth be told, I came exactly four years, 40 pounds, it's difficult to believe, and definitely over 400 bad decisions ago. And I came to CMC with a pretty clear purpose. My goal was I wanted to figure out the big life questions, but more importantly, I wanted to make my family members proud. Now, mind you, I'm from India, so when I say family members, I'm talking about all 763 of them <laughs> and still growing. But I thought making them proud would mean, you know, giving into this notion of what success is. Already done pretty badly, I wasn't going to medical school or law school, but even in the liberal arts, I could you know, potentially salvage some pride by figuring out my way to a consulting job, maybe get on track for that right MBA, and the path was quite clear too. Maybe some good grades, good internship along the way, or join the right organizations on campus. Source, Rose, and SIF all rejected me. Loose. But something rather strange happened when I came to CMC. I mean, for one, the registrar forced me to take classes in things such as French, philosophy, and history that had absolutely nothing to do with my economics major. It's interesting. Even worse, my friends did things such as force me out of my room the night before my midterm to do things such as play inner tube water polo games and participate in coding hackathons. Friends, this was particularly problematic because A, I didn't know how to code, but B, and more dangerously, I didn't know how to swim at the time. <laughs> I, I didn't end up playing, I was just on the bench. But truth be told, the reason I decided to say yes to inner tube water polo was a selfish reason. I'd been rooming with this guy called Tyler Stanek for a while. <laughs> Tyler gets more applause when his name's mentioned. So I'd, been, so I'd been rooming with Tyler for a while, and the power dynamic in our room was quite imbalanced. You see, Tyler was the varsity football team captain. He was also on the varsity basketball team. So I thought playing a little bit of inner tube water polo could fix the deal for me. <laughs> um, Tyler's still a foot taller than me horizontally and vertically, so <laughs> that didn't work out. Anyhow, but my freshman year self will be quite disappointed with where I've come right now. For one, I'm as far away from being a consultant as possible. Sorry, RDS. And my grades since freshman year. I'm sorry, mom, no, that's not woo. So, <laughs> but, you know, on the way, not everything was bad. I realized I would love to spend my time in college splashing my friends in random inner tube water polo games. More so that I was a proud tech geek. Um, I loved debate and I loved rock climbing. And no matter what people such as Eli might tell you, I've become significantly better at pong, at ping pong. <laughs> I've, I've changed quite a bit in my four years here, but truth be told, I don't think I'm the only one. A lot of us have had similar experiences. Millie, for instance, came in wanting to be a pediatric oncologist. I think it's more complicated to pronounce it. And she ended up going for an information session organized by the Kravis Leadership Institute and the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And Millie said, you know, when I went for this info session, I realized that social enterprise and innovation is actually pretty cool. So along with Avantika, she started something called SHARE that exports surplus medical equipment from Northern California to Cameroon. That's pretty awesome and pretty far away from where Millie initially saw herself. I mean, there are so many ridiculous stories like these. My friend Caroline, for instance, came in as a molecular biology major. She would have done my parents proud. She, so she came in as a molecular biology major and CMC sponsored one of her internships up in the Bay Area and she realized she loved working with food stamps. In fact, she's now a public policy major who's trying to revamp the way food stamp policy works in America. One, that's awesome. 
too good luck. Um, <laughs> no, but on, on a serious note, I think we've all evolved in ways our freshman year selves could not have imagined. We've changed, some for the better, some for the worse, but we really have changed from that original vision we had for ourselves. So what's the big point of this speech? Is there a lesson? Honestly, there isn't. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I, don't, I don't have much wisdom or advice to share this morning, this afternoon. I don't even have an Advil to share with anyone this afternoon. <laughs> it's definitely getting censored. But there is something I want to say. Truth be told, friends, at the end of the day, most of us are 21, 22, 23, AKA still quite naive, optimistic, and based on the way yesterday went, still pretty immature. <laughs> <laughs> Two bottles on the stage. Uh, but I think we've got to acknowledge that no matter what a degree might tell us, we probably don't know what's next. That is, we might think that this great job on Wall Street or a law school or grad school gig is the best thing for us, but let's acknowledge, we don't know what else is out there. We haven't tried anything else, and we've spent most of our lives studying. That's why I tell most of my friends and reach out to everyone else who thinks they've figured it out to take a step back at graduation. A, we are probably wrong. We've been wrong quite a few times so far. But B, we are probably internalizing what someone else has told us about figuring it out. Let's figure it out for ourselves. For those who know they aren't figuring it out, great. Hopefully the jokes in the speech can entertain you at the least. <laughs> at CMC, I think we changed in so many ways because CMC gave us opportunities. Because there were just 300 of us in a class and we were bestowed upon with resources such as academic credit and funding to travel to Uganda or Spain or Argentina for a semester or a summer. That's nuts. We got opportunities such as emails from the Athenaeum asking us to sign up for talks with Billie Jean King and Peter Thiel just 10 steps away from our door. Whew. And based on the little bit I've heard about the real world, things aren't quite the same. That is, for one, doing anything cool, so traveling for conferences, going backpacking with friends, traveling to cool music festivals, or just doing anything silly is going to require a much bigger trade-off. Because it's going to be a lot more difficult to justify to ourselves, to our spouses, to our bosses, that we are doing something that doesn't align with what we think we should be doing. And that's why let's question, that's why let's question whether we know in the first place what we should be doing or not. Because hey, while a job at Capitol Hill sounds really cool, maybe you're actually destined to be in a cool Bay Area startup. Or if a Bay Area startup sounds even cooler, maybe you're actually meant to be a surf instructor on a beach in Hawaii. Um, if anyone's looking to do that, so am I. I'm also looking for a green card. Um, <laughs> so, anyone, anyone from the Alumni Association? <laughs> um, Long story short, we probably don't know. Let's have fun. Let's be grateful to the opportunities that CMC gave us and use it as a springboard. Use it to recognize that opportunities are actually awesome and change our lives in many ways. Even when we are 50, we probably haven't figured it out. That's why my, my catchphrase at the end. Let's not, get, let's not get too attached to one life plan, to one notion of success, to one vision of what's right or wrong. Friends, Let's not let our life plans get in the way of a good opportunity. Thank you.